Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to this channel, Solish Fan. My name is Glenn of Ilmanara. And to those of you who are here for the very first time, welcome. And to those of you who are returning subscribers and viewers, welcome back on my channel. So today's topic is about the power of our thoughts. If you are here for the first time and you're wondering what this channel is all about, it's about you helping and discovering who you are authentically in the image of God and functioning in your feminine essence. The beautiful thing about us as women is we can always embody different types of us. You must learn to grow, thrive every single day of your life. I'm not sure how long this video is, so grab yourself a cup of coffee and chat with me. Mm. So the power of our thoughts, the control tower is up here. Do not look around you to change your circumstances. Although some people can help us change our problem, they can give us guidance and advice. However, everything that we do in our lives, it all starts here. Your thoughts is powerful. And it says that in Romans 7, 23, it says, I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind. So we have two kinds of things that are living inside of us, the positive and negative. We are both contrasts. There are two sides of us, the good side and the bad side. Life, as you know it, is full of contrast. There's light, there's darkness, there's good and evil. And that's what Paul is even saying, I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind. It is constantly raging war, constantly changing us into either good or bad, depending on who you listen to. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. So he's saying that the member inside of me, there is the fleshly carnality. It is our nature because of Adam and Eve. It is a rebellious nature, disobedient, who only wants to live for today, who only lives to gratify our fleshly desire. It is about me, myself, and I, what feels good in the moment without thinking about the eternity. This is why Paul said, unless you are born again, and Jesus even said this, even you are here and you are not born again, in the power of Jesus Christ, baptismal in the water and the Holy Ghost, you cannot inherit or enter the kingdom of God. Nicodemus asked the question, how can I be born again? Do I have to go back to my mother's womb the second time? I am a grown woman. I'm a grown man. But Jesus said, you have to convert. It is this knowing that you are living in the world you are blinded by satanic, demonic influences. We have three enemies, our flesh, the world, and Satan, which is actually under the same influence. And therefore, we have to know that we are warring against each other. Do you not ask yourself the question that there are days that you are really doing good? And depending on what, you, what you're thinking and depending on what you watch, because sometimes if I watch too much negativity, like in the news, my brain gets really affected. It gets me so worried about the future. It gets me worried about what if the world is gonna end and what if we're gonna get into war and your brain is going to lead you to this rabbit hole of the what ifs and it's gonna think what's the worst thing that's gonna happen. And this is why it says that I see this law of my mind and what we have to do is to have to bring it into captivity we have to imprison those thoughts because of the members our inner man that's constantly warring against it sin is a practice it's a lifestyle the things that we participate in and if you're going to ask yourself the question what is sin what consists of sin well if you go back to galatians 5 16 25 it talks about all the things of the sin that god really want us to distinguish between what does it look like to live in sin and what does it look like to live in a godly manner and therefore if you go to galatians and just find your bible if you go there you can find that paul wrote it in galatians to galatia that there is a distinction between living in sin and living for christ there is the correlation of 
wanting to live for God, that is, I'm, feel, I'm pretty sure if you have read your Bible before, you are familiar with this, that you have to distinguish between the two that says, in, starting with 16, verse 16, chapter 5, I say then walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Again, it is the carnal mind. It is your old mindset. Because it is, says that the work of the flesh, I am skipping through verse 19, it says that it is evident what are the sins. It says that adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, so on and so forth. You read that in your own spare time. And then, of course, in 522, the walking in the spirit, the renewing of our mind is about love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness. So we can see that if you are living for God, there must be a renewing of your mind. In Romans 12, 2, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed form by the renewing of your mind by reading the word of god and listening to the right teachings praying in the holy spirit and always meditating in the word of god remember joshua 1 9 god instructed joshua to do what the book of this law the book of the law which is the bible must not depart from you you must meditate day in and day out so that your way will become prosperous and you become successful god instructed joshua to meditate because our brain is like a toddler it has to be subdued it has to be disciplined otherwise our brain was going to be going here and there it's like a flying monkey it's all over the place if you do not give it a direction if you do not give it some attention, it's going to do whatever it wants to do. For instance, this morning, if I tell my brain that I just don't want to do this, gradually I'm going to just sit around doing nothing, wasting my time. But the moment I woke up, I have premeditated, I already decided, I told my brain, we're going to make this video today for Monday. Therefore, your brain will just have to follow your thoughts First in your imagination, you have to tell it what it wants to do. Your body is just going to follow. Your thoughts govern your emotions. And after that, you're just going to do the action. And how do we change our thinking? Because I said, the power of our thoughts. We want to change our lives. It all starts from here. Especially when you have been dealing with traumatic experiences. If you have been wounded from the past, it all starts up here. 2 Corinthians 10, 2, 6, if we're, gonna, if we're gonna read there. So this is about the mind today. Thank you, Jesus, that we are being guided to reveal to us the things of, of the mind because many of us did not know that our mind is powerful. Our thoughts are a very powerful tool that Satan can actually use it against us. And if you're not careful, we can also bring uh, our minds into sorts of problem. Remember what uh, Paul wrote to the Corinthians. He said in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, let's start with verse 16. Uh, no, where, where, where was I? Two, no, 10, chapter 10, verses 2 to th through 6. Uh, 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we're walking in the flesh, we're still alive. You can still see me physically. We do not war according into the flesh. So he's saying that we do not war against the flesh only. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. So our thoughts are invisible. You cannot see it. You cannot touch it. You cannot feel it. You cannot use your senses. They are not carnal. These are spiritual things. These are invisible matter that you cannot possibly perceive. In order for us to defeat the weapons of our warfare, which is our thoughts, the negative thoughts in our mind, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. So this is how we can defeat the negative thought. The power of our mind is to pull down strongholds. Strongholds are garrison. These are belief system, the BS, the belief system that you have allowed to penetrate. You have allowed to meditate. It is a recording that you have internalized as a child. I have all this dialogue that I have accumulated throughout my adulthood that started 
as a young age. This is why if you do not know why you're triggered with certain words, because of the stronghold, someone had this recorder that told you as a child, you are dumb, stupid, ugly, you're never going to amount to anything. You are a loser and therefore, as you grow up, you're just going to be unsuccessful. This is a self-fulfilling prophecy that many people told in us, I'll by parents, your mom, maybe your dad, your sisters, your brothers, your peers, your teachers. These can be strongholds if you allow these words to penetrate and to be planted in your heart. That's why the words are powerful. That's what the Bible says. Your word can either edify, it, it can either build someone up, or it can tear them apart. It can either bless someone or curse them. That's why the power is in our tongue as a mom, as a dad, as also a person in general, that whatever we say, it has an impact on that person. It becomes a stronghold. So if you keep on pondering on the negative thoughts of what your parents told you, guess what? You're going to internalize that and you think to yourself, that must be true. But we are told that we have to pull down, casting down, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So we have to, I wrote it down here, um, casting down, asking yourself the question, why am I thinking this way? Right? We have to argue. We have to find out the root cause of it. We have to question the validity of our thoughts and think about what you're thinking about. How many of us, we just allow thoughts to come in and we don't question whether or not it is valid, whether or not it's the truth, whether or not asking this question, is this true of how God say about me? Because sometimes we just accept some thought. And it says that it has to be rejected. It has to be rebuked. It says that we have to cast down and every high thing that it exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So if a thought comes in, if somebody tells you and it's not in the Bible, you have to reject, rebuke. You have to say these thoughts are not of God. That's why it says that you have to cast down against the knowledge well what does god says about you how does god think of you this is why if you don't need if you don't read your bible if you don't know your word you're just going to believe the words of the world the words of the people around you god said you are fearfully and wonderfully made nothing in the word of god that will ever tell you that you're stupid dumb ugly you are a reject, you are ruined, you are damaged good, you will never mount up to anything. You cannot find that in the Bible. Therefore, you have to really find out how does God view me? God said, my thoughts of you are precious, innumerable. I think of the thoughts of you that are beautiful, wonderful. The AC is on, I don't know if you can still hear me. And therefore, we have to know the word of God and it says that we have to follow the word of God that is doctrinally sound. You have to replace it. The belief system that you have been believing that are incongruent with the word of God. So this is why you reject the words that are not of God. You reject and replace it with the word of God that it says in Philippians 4. How do we replace the word of God? Um, how do we replace negative thinking to positive thinking? Let's go to Philippians 4.8. Uh, Paul said to the Philippians, this is how we should discipline our mind. We have to subdue our flesh and we have to tell our brain of what needs to think about. We have to make sure that, hey, this is what we're going to think about today. We're not thinking about negative thoughts. It takes a lot of work. I know that for sure because my mind can go about the past i can ruminate about the past i can stay there if i want to and sometimes my brain is going to lead me to think about the future and worry about the future that we have to be careful of the things that we actually ponder because look what philippians 4 8 it says here that finally brethren 
whatever things are true. So you ask yourself the question, is this true? As I said, you ask the source of it. Whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, are these praiseworthy? If somebody tells you something, are these praiseworthy? Does it contribute to my life? If it's not, reject it, rebuke it, replace it, don't believe it. Meditate on these things. This is why we, we are told to meditate, to memorize a verse, specifically a verse, and ponder on that verse, and stay on that verse, and ask yourself the question, how can I apply this specific verse in my life? That's what Jesus said, do not worry about your life. Whatever you eat, don't worry about what you drink, whatever you put on your clothes, because life is more important. And today's problem is efficient enough. That's why you don't worry about what people say about you. If it's, it has no truth, the reason why people tell you about you, it's because most likely it's about them. It's how they feel about themselves. It is a reflection of them. They just want to project it onto you. They want to give you their image of what they see in the mirror. This is why we have to reject and replace. Rebuke and replace every negative thoughts and change it into things that are true. What is true about me? Well, God said I'm beautiful. God said I'm unique. Is it noble thoughts? Are these thoughts just? No, they're not just because a human being that has a good intention will never insult you, will never gaslight you, will never going to give you a label. So if it's not just, don't listen to these people. Are these lovely? Are these pure? Do they think of me as a highly individual, a praiseworthy? If they keep criticizing you, for instance, one of the things that our family would say, why are you doing this? You're not capable of doing this. Who do you think you are for starting a business? None of our family did this before. So these are thoughts and these are criticisms that you can listen to them, but it's still your choice to act on it and get their advice or reject their advice and says, thank you for your opinion but your advice is not something that I would want to take on because it's not your life. This is my life. You do, I will do me and you do you. Because sometimes we listen to unsolicited advice that it's not biblically sound. We listen to people that has no really credibility. They haven't even done it. They haven't proven themselves and here they are criticizing you for saying, who are you to start a business? It has not been done before. None of our family ever did this. So they will criticize you, hoping that you're going to give up in your dreams. But if you know the word of God, and it says that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength, all things are possible in God. Therefore, whatever people say, their opinions that they may give you, it doesn't matter. So we have to really set our mind on the things that are above. We have to make sure that we have to guard our thoughts. That's why Proverbs 4.23, guard your heart. The heart is also interconnected with the mind. We cannot separate the mind from the heart. They are, they are intertwined because whatever you're thinking, your emotions is gonna get affected. As I said on my videos a um, few days ago, or a few weeks ago now on my birthday, somebody ruined my birthday. I was very upset that day. It was not something that I anticipated. It wasn't something that I was looking forward to. I could have a choice to wallow in self-pity, but I guarded my heart. I refocused my mind and says, I am not going to allow this individual to ruin my day. I will celebrate my day whether or not this person is willing to celebrate with me. So this is why it is about your refocusing, reshifting your attention into something that you want to do in your life. So these are just a few tips that I can give you, practical advice that I hope that you're blessed today. And if you like to work with me, perhaps one-on-one -on -one coaching, 
I'm gonna free to open that and support me. All the link and the information is down below. And I have a blog too that you can read all the things that I have produced on this video. Again, your support and your love is highly appreciated. As always, share, like, subscribe if you prefer. Until next time, I hope that you are bold, be blessed, be courageous, and keep your faith because that's all we have in this world. Until next time, I will see you on my next video. Have a wonderful day ahead of you.